Hey Lirani here, if you want to be able to paint directly with watercolor with no pencil lines preparation whatsoever, and if you're struggling with getting dull colors, which is something I hear a lot about, stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how this works to create very vibrant lush colors that work well together and pretty much not get any dull gray that looks boring or out of context. Let's get to it. This is a unique process in that what I'm going to show you is how I paint directly with no pencil lines which is something I've shown you before, but this time it's going to be like a full scene. So a bit more complete, a larger scene, like a street scene, as you see here. Um, this is something I have done before. I just haven't gotten a lot of chances to share and perhaps I did and I forget, but um, a lot of it is, it's really hard to give a how to. Um, a lot of it is <laughs> falling back on your senses and, and I definitely have some inaccuracies here thanks to it being direct, again, no pencil lines. Um, I think a big thing for me is that it just inspires me because I can see the the end result, the, the final wash as it will appear once complete. And that's something that I really like. Um, almost like, again, I talk about this a lot in the context of pen and ink uh, versus pencil. There is something very satisfying. It's very quick instant gratification of seeing what it's going to look like as the end result. Now, one more thing on a on a very practical level, painting like this allows you to focus a lot on a small spot. And I, this may be counterintuitive for so many people who are worried that everything needs to be merged together and everything that can flow should flow. In my experience, this is not true, and I've proven this many times before in many different painting processes. Now, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. There is no right or wrong here. It's just a matter of if you feel like something is the right thing to do, but you hear other people say it's not, it is much more effective to test it against your own experience rather than believing someone, including myself. Um, to me, I find that, for example, this small spot, this car in the center, I can just focus on that for a while uh, and give it my all and not worry about having things flow together. Now, on a micro level, yes, I'm kind of letting things flow together and the small details of the car within that small area I'm working on. But this is much more manageable. Uh, and I started from the windshield, you know, so I took my time to do some wet and wet. I took my time to do a lot of things. Now, it doesn't also mean you have to paint like this. Uh, there is a lot of um, of a variance and and uh, a, possible, a possibility of a hybrid approach, meaning um, you can just do a very minimalistic drawing where you just put in the major shapes of light and shadow. You can do... A very detailed drawing if you feel like you need it. It's all about um, not only what uh, what is the easiest for you or the the most um, natural even I would say. A lot of it is what inspires you because this way of painting really inspires me. Now if I had a super detailed sketch here, um, as long as it's a small piece of paper, I sometimes find it very boring and limiting. And even though I'm conveying a lot with the paint, um, I'm still, at the end of the day, I feel like I'm less expressive. But that's me. You may have a different feeling towards it, which is why you really need to marry it with your own experience. That's how I see it, at least. Now we get to a bit of a complex part. Uh, this is where the car first shortens into the distance behind that um, street light, I think, is what it is. Um, and you know what? Just like all the principles I talk about when drawing, same applies here. What you are doing is figuring out the relations and proportions. How long is this compared to that area? Now, I don't need to measure. I have this down to an instinct. You may need to measure, and that's okay. And by the way, I was a bit sloppy here. You'll see in a couple of seconds. But once this starts really connecting, you'll see. Um, but yeah, I definitely have some inaccuracies. You can be sure they wouldn't have been there here had I um, had a very detailed, proper sketch. What would have been lost is that expressiveness I talked about. Now, I received a couple of questions, and, and this is a question that actually I get all the time. And I should make a, another dedicated video to that. And that is how to avoid getting dull colors. A lot of people say 
all my colors are dull. My paintings end up like one big gray mess. Um, now, if you look at the way I mix the colors, none of these colors still up to this point are very shouty, right? There's no strong blues, reds, yellows, greens, whatever. But the magic is in the nuance, meaning this is not just a collection of gray colors. There's actually logic to it. So the top, the hood of the car is a little warm. The windshield is a little cool. The lower part of the front of the car, you'd call the bumper, I guess. The bumper is warm because it's reflecting light from the ground. Look at this rush stroke there. Um, all of these small nuances, they do read as something that makes sense. Now, what a lot of people do, they, they have a bit of a hard time discerning the different grays, which, because it's not grays, it's just colors, what you see here. The shadow on the car is a little blue, right? And as it recedes to the background, it becomes a little violet. Now, I exaggerated that a bit, but still, already, you can see some contrast in the colors. Violet is the side of the car, and yellow in the front bumper and the license plate. These things, same for the um, um, street lamp green it's still a very neutral green but it is a green these things compound and when all of these things are there present together uh, you do get a result that is coherent um, and that is one thing that's very easy that very important to understand a lot of people complain everything is is gray and muted that's because what you're doing is you're mixing and mixing and you're adding and you end up with just a, a random gray very often. And all of these random grays together look random. That's just how it works. Um, and because of how they look random, they don't read as either one picture, one complete picture, picture vision, view, painting, whatever you want to call it. Or they read as a mess that is sometimes even hard to tell what you're looking at. Okay. Uh, so even here where my shapes are sloppy, look at the second car, right? You can still tell, okay, there's a windshield, there's the window to the side. I haven't made it as blue as it is in the reference photo. It's a little more, I would say I need a bit of cobalt there to get it closer to that. Um, there's a lot of things I could have done, but still it reads so well because the shape is somehow there and the, and the values and the colors, the nuance of the gray is there. So a collection of gray colors that are mimicking what you're looking at accurately will lead to an impression that is realistic, that is easy to read. But if it's just a bunch of random grays, you may have the same grays, but they're arranged differently because of how randomly you mix them, it won't work. And you will see this later on in the later stages of this painting. I do a glaze over everything that is light. You'll be shocked at how much it improves the painting. I think it really is worth um, worth mentioning and focusing on. And by the way, talking about improving your paintings, this video, like many of my videos, is sponsored by my frustration-free water chlorine course. I'm gonna make it quick. If you wanna learn how to let go, enjoy the painting process, get the results you want, and have that freedom, that expressiveness, exactly as you see here, be sure to check it out. It's gonna organize a lot of things for you during the painting process, but also before that. There are a lot of preparations you can do to make it easier before you even begin painting. So I encourage you to check that out. And if you already have, and you're wondering what the next step, if you are interested in painting realistically, check out the watercolor, watercolor realism course. I'm going to give you a system very organized to how to produce that realistic impression using just black and white mostly. I think you'll love these. Okay, back to the process. So while we're um, adding more and more details, what will happen is a, a picture will show up. And what you're seeing here is the picture becoming alive in front of your eyes. And I love that. I love that stage when things connect, when things start to look like a scene. You'll see a lot of artists paint isolated objects. And I'm not talking about a still life arrangement where it's just the, the arrangement and everything else is kind of just a table or whatever. I'm talking about just a single object, um, <clears throat> and while I like this, I think a lot of them, and from talking to some artists, by the way, a lot of them would want to create a complete scene, but they don't know how. Um, now, there isn't really a recipe for that, again. Um, it almost is like marrying, again, that word, marrying your 
experience and your vision with the reference photo at hand. And if you're fully engaged in the painting process, the result of that will end up with an impression on paper. And the impression will be uniquely yours. And I think the most fascinating thing is to find that impression that is uniquely yours. Um, which is why, again, I drop a lot of the rules and a lot of the uh, best practices. I just threw everything out the window. I find that painting this way helps me do that. Um, and you see that it's a car. What's the fastest way to include that car there? Just place it in. Place the details. I see some yellow light reflected on the windshield. I just place it over. Then there are some darks. I'm just placing them over. And it, it's crazy, but it actually works. The fastest way to paint something is to place it there. Now, maybe you've had this experience, I know I have, of building things up slowly with multiple glazes and just losing interest. Um, the reason that happened to me personally was, just look at how directly I'm putting all of these details. The reason it happened to me was I was using a certain method, approach, technique, however you want to call it, as a middleman to get the result I want. So I know I want this kind of, I have this kind of a vision in mind. The way to do it is with multiple layers. Now, there is nothing wrong with using multiple layers. There's nothing wrong with me using multiple layers. The problem started arising because I was using it not for the purpose of using that technique, but more for the purpose of this is how I know it's done. So I did not allow the true painting process that was in me to show up. I just did not allow it to show up because I was forcing a specific technique on it and nothing works by force. Um, and this kind of a process that if you ask me is very rare. I don't know how many people are going to watch this video. My average is like 2000 people per video to 3000. If you watch this video, know that you're watching something special. I don't have many processes like this one. I have one that's saved for the upcoming course, the Ron's Vault. I'm going to talk about that in the future. I don't have many of these processes, and it's rare for me to share something this direct as a full scene. Um, and so just know that, and it's not special because you, that's how I recommend you paint. Um, th this isn't about recommendations. It's not about tips. It's not about advice. Um, these things are irrelevant. It's more about feeling through the process and, and doing things because you are truly compelled to do them. Look at this bottom section now. I put in wet and wet all of these shadows. I did not plan for it to, to be wet and wet, but then once I put that warm wash, wonderful opportunity. So I use that. These kinds of on-the-fly decisions are not the result of planning and strategy. They're, they're not also the result of doing things haphazardly. They're the result of a complete engagement in the process. And anything that takes away from that engagement, I talked about this a bit in the Discord, um, anything, any thoughts of, I hope this looks good. I hope people who watch this think I'm doing a good job. I hope to produce a good tutorial for others. These thoughts are poison to the process. They're well-intentioned. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong about a teacher, so-called, wanting to teach. Um, but they're poison because they take away the gift, the true gift of the process, which is to be fully, 100% engaged in it. Um, so here you see me, and I want to talk about something else in a second. I, here you see me putting in those dark sections behind. These are the dark sections you see between the cars, between the trees, between the stores. I was quite lazy. And not lazy in a bad way. I just wanted to get this part over with and get to the juicy part of the tree. So I just placed in a bunch of shadows and here I am going straight for the trees. Now what you're gonna see is, the more I understand the impression I created, and the reference photo moved to the right, uh, the more I understand the impression I created, the more I can orient myself around the scene. But right now it would be very hard. So the way to orient myself is to start putting things in. This is a part of the reactionary um, reactionary painting I've been talking to you a lot about, of putting something in, then figuring out how it relates. Now I figured, okay, there's the storefront, the red storefront behind. I'm almost painting it symbolically, just, okay, it's a, it's a, a big red area. Underneath it, there's a shadow, so I'm placing in that shadow, and slowly things start to connect, and I'm better able to orient myself. 
especially when you paint this way, sometimes it's just easy, it's just hard to orient yourself. It's not as easy as a normal process because we have no, no drawing to rely on. Uh, and because of that, what helps us orient is to put things in there, um, is to discover the scene as it unfolds. And <coughs> this has nothing to do with technique. This has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with my personal desire to create this way. You will have a different desire. That is fine. If you find that desire, everything is going to be easier. The way to find it, full engagement in the process. Um, but but the way I spoke it was almost too, uh, too carelessly uh, because I made it sound like, yes, this is how you do it. This is the advice. It doesn't really translate to an advice. Um, it's more about removing the things that stand in your way. For example, this building here. I did not know how to paint it, so I kind of place it in. It doesn't look like the way I wanted it to. I'm putting in the floors, you'll see in a second. I just lift and whatever stays there looks okay. You're gonna see this happen in a second. Um, that's just a part of this painting process that I've chosen for this, for this scene. Again, it's not a conscious choice, it's just, the thing that felt most natural to me. Now, if, you, if you've been looking at the building up top for a while now and you're gonna see me you know, adding some warmth to it and then I'm gonna try and lift and I'm gonna dab out some of the paint because I don't like it. Now, I challenge you to look back down where the cars are and suddenly you see the impression showed up while you weren't paying attention. That's usually how these things work. Um, one more interesting question I got was someone asked me on YouTube if I sell my uh, practice paintings and it made me realize I don't have any practice paintings anymore. Um, every painting I paint is made ideally, if I'm able to, with full immersion in the process. So the size of the, the dimensions of the painting may be smaller, the scale may be smaller, the subject may be simpler or more complex, but my intention is always to produce my vision completely. Whether it's a detailed vision, whether it's a loose and abstract vision, it doesn't matter. My intention is always to make it the best and the closest to my final vision as I can. My vision could be blurry and impressionistic, right? Or my vision could be realistic. But that's how I've been painting for a while now. Um, I don't have any practice pieces. If I'm feeling really down, I may grab a piece of paper and do a bunch of random marks. It's rare. But if I'm painting something, I'm painting it. And again, I'm not doing it because it's a decision I made or it's an ideal I uphold. It's just that this is the most fun way for me to paint. To paint it as finished uh, or as complete as a complete encapsulation of my vision. Uh, that is the reason I do it this way. It's not for anything else. Uh, now I wanna show you something, this is interesting. So there's this tree here and the way I'm painting it in the beginning is a little, uh, you know, I'm using darks. What you'll see me do later on, I don't remember if it happens now or a little later on. We're close to finishing this process, by the way. Um, I'm gonna use a lot of opaque paint in a couple of moments. And one thing I will do is add a bunch of this paint to the, uh, branches there to make them pop, um, to make them lighter or as light as some of the background. Uh, this is an effect that's very tricky to achieve. I have shared work by uh, Arthur Koopmans, Koopmans or Koopman, I, I keep confusing it, uh, someone I follow over on Instagram. Uh, he managed to paint a tree with strong golden light on it in a way that is very challenging to achieve, which is why I shared it in my story. And this was kind of what I envisioned here. Um, but already, if you take a few steps back, squint your eyes, you know, do whatever you have to do, minimize the video, you see an impression, you see a final, you see a final scene. What I, I think I forgot mentioning, I did mention this in the Instagram post. This is a scene I painted plein air. Here we go with the opaque paint. I added John Brilliant to the mix. Look at what it's gonna do. It's gonna make this yellowy with yellow ochre, by the way. It's gonna make these beautiful bright branches. I forgot to mention I did paint this many years ago, 2017 must have been, uh, this scene plein air. So I'm very familiar with it and I love the results that I got plein air, uh, which I think is really cool. If I remember, don't don't hold me to it. I may rem I, If I remember, I may share a picture of that original painting. I don't know if I'll be able to even find it. 
Uh, but if I do, I will share it here and you'll see it's the same scene. I was very heavy on the purples back then. Um, as usually happens with my planners, I don't know what it is, uh, but yeah. Now, now this is a fun part where I'm starting to bring some life and color to it. Um, so what you'll see me do is using just a bunch of this beautiful, uh, it's going to be cobalt blue and a bit of John Brilliant. I didn't even try and change to, uh, because John Brilliant is a little um, warm uh, and cobalt blue is obviously cool. So usually I'll mix cobalt blue with permanent white, but I don't know, I just went for it. Now look at this leaking of the paint into the, the darks. This is wonderful. One of my favorite effects um, to capture. You'll see similar effects um, in a couple of moments with the trees and their um, and all of the foliage and the leaves and the details there. I kind of go wild. Um, it's just a way I really enjoy painting sometimes. Um, adding a bit of randomness to it gives me a lot of satisfaction. I don't know what it is. This is true not only for trees and foliage and landscapes. It's also true just for cars and buildings. I love adding a, an element of randomness to it. Um, I'm mixing a bit of a brighter green. It's going to be too bright, so I need to kind of just dumb it down with uh, yellow ochre. This is basically um, phthalo blue with lemon yellow. Very bright green. Very, very bright. So I added a bit of yellow ochre. Ideally, I would add a bit of red like I'm doing right now. I remembered what I'm doing, uh, making it a little more brown. Now, this is going to merge very nicely with those brush marks with opaque paint and everything together. And it's going to look really good when it all flows and leaks together. Um, and it's again, it's this element of randomness that is, you can't really force it. It's about throwing a lot of paint in there, throwing a lot of water in there. Another big element is adding lemon yellow directly in. Lemon yellow, someone commented they're happy that lemon yellow is helping more people. It definitely helps me. Uh, because it's quite opaque, you see it's strong. I can put it wet and wet and it will blend out together, blend outwards into a dark wash and it will be very visible. Um, and then you can charge it with some water, push it back a bit. I'm trying to splash a bit of water here um, just to make it, you know, more uh, kind of stronger. Now we're at a point in the painting where we're almost done, but I want to challenge you when you look at the reference photo, are you seeing any differences between my painting and the reference photo in an overall, from an overall perspective? Kind of jump between the two and think to yourself, what's the difference between my painting and the reference photo? Can you uh, recognize something that looks a little different between the two? And I'm going to give you another hint. It has to do with the ground level. Um, so the thing that's happening here is I kind of missed a bit of the warmth to the ground. So what happens is I do have a lot of violets and I do have a lot of blues and greens, but something is off balance with the warmth. So what you'll see me do in a couple of seconds is prepare a large wash to cover almost everything with a nice golden sheen to it. You're going to see this happen in a couple of seconds. Kind of want to put in some details there. Um, kind of highlights that I see in the distance with my white gel pen, Signo Uniball. Signo is S-I-G-N-O Uniball white gel pen. You can find these on Amazon quite cheap. I find they're very useful for small highlights, just for small highlights. If you need to cover up a large area, forget about it. But if you need small highlights with a neutral uh, white, it can be very useful. Uh, neutral as in more towards the cool. If you're looking for a warm feel, it's going to feel like it stands out and not in a good way. Um, so yeah, adding a bit of blue here and there just to bring, to give it some color. But you'll see again, I'm going to do a bit more of a colorful wash in a second. Right now, it's just small touches where I feel like there is a bit of coolness where I missed it. Some of it is very abstract in its nature. This blue on the second car behind a white car. It's very abstract. Now I'm signing this prematurely again. And what you're going to see me do is mix a big, thin yellow wash. Now follow what I'm doing here. Look at the before. I'm going to share with you a before and after, hopefully, because I did scan this before this improvement. Look at how much it improves everything. So talking about grays, we talked a lot about controlling different grays and mixing different nuanced colors. Look at how a wash over the whole thing can pretty much change everything. And I have seen a few artists that do that 
to great success. They actually plan their paintings so that there will be an overarching wash above everything that brings out the beauty in it. Look at how significant it is uh, and how much it brings that feeling of sunlight. And what we're doing here is not changing the value too much. I'm keeping it fairly light, but I'm just pushing the warmth to be the way I need it to be. And if you compare it to the reference photo now, it's much closer. Okay, and it brings out one more thing, the greenery, the lush greens here in the scene really benefited from it. So now while I'm at it, I'm thinking to myself, let's add some more color. Because when I look at the entire scene, there are a lot of yellow signs and red signs and just interesting little details. Why not add those in? Let the viewer enjoy these. Um, to me, this is really a fascinating painting I'm considering putting it up for sale on the gallery, but I'll, I'll have to consider maybe I'll keep it for the future for an auction. It's a special piece. Um, I do have a, a bunch of these painted this way. I just haven't really shared as many of these processes. Um, and whenever something connects like this, even though it's rough, even though it's, it's a raw process, right? It's not necessarily the highly polished, very detailed piece Still, take a few steps back, look at it from afar. It reads so well. It's exactly how I envisioned it. It's rare for a painting to turn out this way and whenever they do, I'm so happy with it. Um, and yes, these are kind of my thoughts on this process, on you know painting different color saturations. Look at the car in the front. Look at the purple to its side, its right side. How much that purple is now bright thanks to the warmth because they are contrasting their, um, um, what do you call it, complementary colors on the color wheel. Because of that, they really supercharge one another, same like orange and blue. So you have this beautiful violet purple right next to a yellow warmth. It makes it light up. So here's the final result. I hope you like it. Let me show you a comparison, the before and after uh, of placing in that golden wash. Um, and let me also kind of show you a zoomed in view. And this is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. And as I mentioned before, don't forget to take a look at the frustration free watercolor course. If you want to unlock that freedom, this is exactly what it's meant to do. Finally paint with the freedom you search for as well as the watercolor realism course. If that's something that interests you more, I want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. I really, really do appreciate your support. There are a few um, exclusive processes few exclusive posts. Be sure to check these out. And of course, you can receive credits at the end of the videos if you're a supporter. That's it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in another vid. Take care.